Hi friends, I'm Corey from Alban Glow Basin Fiber Arts, here to help elevate your crochet. This video is a follow-up from one that I released a few weeks ago, here. In that video, I described how to make a crochet pumpkin out of a rectangle of crochet fabric in any stitch. And I got a lot of good feedback from the video as well as a few people who were asking if I had a pattern or a follow-up video specifically for my modified star stitch pumpkin and that is these three here and I'm happy to say the answer to those questions is yes to both. I've linked the pattern below in the description box and I'm going to show you how to make this pumpkin now. Let's get started. The materials that we'll need for this project are obviously yarn. We'll need some twine for the stem to wrap around the stem. We also will need something to use for the stem. I've been using these from the Dollar Tree, uh, these little wood stems, a pair of scissors, and a yarn needle for weaving in the ends and also making the, uh, the indentations with some yarn. And then a, a measuring tape, of course, always comes in handy. And for a crochet hook, today I'm going to be using a Furls crochet hook. Uh, it's a Laurel Streamline hook. I just got it and I absolutely love it. I really like a wooden hook because they're just so lightweight. I will link this below in my caption in case you're interested in checking this out. Before we get started with uh, the crochet portion of this tutorial, I wanted to talk a little bit about the construction of these pumpkins. You can see here that I've got them in three different sizes, and these two are rather lightweight. I've just filled them with the polyfill. This one I actually have filled with some weights to turn it into a doorstop. And uh, to do that, I just picked out some rocks from my yard, but I actually here have a bag of, of stones that I bought from the Dollar Tree for $1.25. And you can use those when you're stuffing your pumpkin and put a, a handful of those right in the middle of the stuffing to provide you with some weight so that you can use your pumpkin as a doorstop or have it be a little more weighted down. Uh, even if you make maybe a taller pumpkin and you don't want it to topple over, you can use some rocks in the bottom to weight it down. These are sized in three different sizes here. They're all, well, I don't know, pretty similar, but they're a little different, each of them. I was messing around with different stitch counts and row heights during the, the design process. There is a pattern available for this pumpkin, and in the pattern I describe the math that you would need to do in order to custom size your pumpkin. But I also provide uh, the instructions for three different sizes. A mini pumpkin that we're going to make today, what I'm calling a small pumpkin that's about a five and a half inch diameter uh, by about four and a half inches tall and then a larger pumpkin that is eight inches in diameter by five inches tall. This is what our rectangle is going to look like for the mini pumpkin. You'll notice that the rows of the pumpkin, they actually wind up becoming the height of the pumpkin. So we're going to fold this in half, seam along this edge, and then cinch the bottom, the top, and stuff the pumpkin to make it round. But you can see here that our rows actually correspond to the height plus the allowance that we have for folding over the top and the bottom. The length of our rectangle will correspond to the circumference of our pumpkin. That means you can custom size your pumpkin to any height or any length using the formulas that I provide in the pattern. Okay, let's get started. To begin, we're going to make a slip knot. Place that on our hook. And for the mini pumpkin, we're going to chain 26. The star stitch pattern that we're going to be using is uh, made in multiples of two plus four extra chains that we'll use in the very first row to form the first star. 
I'm gonna finish up here chaining 26 and I'll meet you right back. All right, here's my chain. To start on the star stitch, we're going to pull up a loop from the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth chains from the hook. Okay, so we're not gonna count the chain that's, or the loop that's on our hook. We're gonna count this as the first chain here. And then there's two, three, four, five, and six. All right? So we'll start with number two. So here's one, here's two. We're gonna go into there and we're just gonna go into that back loop of the chain and pull up a, a loop on our hook for two. And now we're gonna to move to the next one and do the same. The next one. Again, the next one. And we're looking for six loops on our hook. So there we go, whoops. The last one here. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six loops on our hook. And we want to pull up a little slack in this last loop because we're going to work right back into that as a spike in our next stitch. And so we want to have that be a little bit loose, yarn over, and I grab with my fingers here to pull down so that you can slide your loop through all six loops on your hook. And then we're gonna close the, the stitch with a chain one. And there is our first star. To do the next star, we're gonna be working into five spaces again. The first one's gonna be in the chain one we just created right here. The next one will be in that final spike. So that was the last loop we had of the six that were on our hook. We're gonna work right down into the, the chain where this is anchored in the base. And then we're gonna use the next two open chains of our base, okay? So to do that, we'll go through the chain one and pull up a loop, through that final spike and pull up a loop, through that stitch where the spike was anchored to the base chain, pull up a loop, and then the next two open chains. And again, we're working only in that back loop. And that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six chains on our hook. Again, we wanna pull that up a little bit so we have some room to get into that spike on our next stitch. Pull through, chain over, or chain one. And there we go, we have two. And we'll just keep working in the same manner through the chain one, pull up a loop, through the final spike, pull up a loop, through the stitch where we're anchored, pull up a loop, and then through the next two open stitches. One, two, and there we go. We've got six loops on our hook again. We'll pull through. Chain one to close it off. Okay, so we're gonna keep working across our chain all the way to the other end, and I will meet you back when we are down to the last two chains on our, on our initial chain 26. Okay, I'm down to my final star stitch of the chain row. You can see I have my two open chains here that I'm working into, yarning over, pulling up a loop, and into the last chain of the base row, yarning over, pulling up a loop, chaining one to complete the final star. But we want our edges to be nice and straight. And you can see here that it kind of angles in on this edge. So we're gonna add a half star at the end here just to finish off and make a nice straight edge. To do that, we're going to Start like we do with our regular star stitch. We're going to go right in through the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then we're gonna skip that final spike of the star, and we're just gonna go right down into that final chain, yarn over, pull up a loop. That gives us three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and that creates what I call a half star. 
And then to turn and start the next row, we're just going to chain one and turn. Okay, we've completed row one and now we're ready to start row two. The way we're going to do row two is we're going to place two half double crochets in each eye of each of the stars across. So these are all the, the eyes. It's basically the chain one space that we created at the top of each star. And so we're going to create two half double crochets in each eye of each star across, like so. To make a half double crochet, we yarn over our hook, insert into the eye, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on our hook. That's it. We're just going to repeat that process twice in each eye of each star across. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row in order to show you how to finish row two. I'm down to my last eye of my last star stitch and I'm going to place those two half double crochets into that eye like so. And now to finish off this row, we're going to place a slip stitch under both loops through the top of that star stitch there at the end of the row. And to do that, we yarn over, pull up a loop and pull through everything. And that completes row two. For row three, we're going to turn our work. And now we're back on the right side of the fabric and you can see our stars from rows one and two. And this is a two row repeat. The first row obviously is a little bit different because we were working into the main chain that we were starting with. So row two, which you just saw, will be the same all the way through the project. And now row three will be the star stitch row that we make for the rest of the project. To start row three, we're gonna start by chaining three, one, two, and three. And at this point, we're going to work into this chain three to start our first star. It's a little bit like how we started the first chain, but it is a little bit different. And I wanna explain it to you. In the pattern, I refer to this as the beginning star stitch or the beginning um, cluster. And to start it, we're going to insert in the back loop of the second chain from the hook right here yarn over and pull up a loop. Now we're gonna do the same in the third chain, the back loop of the third chain, yarning over, pull up a loop. And now we're going to work into the back loop of what was the slip stitch from the end of the row that we just finished with the half double crochets. So we're gonna go into the back loop of that slip stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. And then we're going to go into the back loop of the very next open stitch, yarning over, pull up a loop, and one more time, back loop of the next open stitch. And we wind up with six loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all six, and chain one to close off our first star. The rest of our star stitches are worked the same way that they were in the beginning chain. However, we're gonna be working in the back loop of the available stitches. So here's how we do that. We're going to insert into the eye, yarn over and pull up a loop into that final spike, yarn over, pull up a loop, into the back loop of that last stitch that we worked on the previous star, yarn over, pull up a loop. And now we're gonna work into the back loop of the next available stitch yarn over, pull up a loop, and one more time, the back loop of the next available stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. There's six, yarn over, pull through all six, 
chain one to close. One more time, more quickly. Through the eye, through the spike, through the last stitch from the previous star, through the back loop of the next available, through the back loop of the next available, and yarn over, pulling through all six, and then chain one to close. So we're going to continue working these stars all the way across, and again we're going to end in that last available stitch, and I'll show you how I end the half star in this row. Um, it is slightly different again from the one that we worked at the bottom. I'll be right back. Now I want to make that final half star at the end. And for all the right side rows from row three on, we're going to do it just slightly different. So it starts out the same. We're going to go through the eye and pull up a loop. And now the last stitch, we worked through the back loop of this final stitch. But in this case, I want to go under both loops. And the reason for that is it kind of closes up that big gap there or that hole that was created by us stretching that back loop of the stitch out. And you can see it looks much better. And when I yarn over and pull through all three loops on my hook, you can see that it's nice and even there at the end. And we don't have that big gap anymore. You can also see how nice and straight this is already starting to form up as we work up the side of our star stitch rows. Okay, row number four is going to require a chain one turn, and we're back to our half double crochet row where we're going to work two half double crochets in each of the eye stitches across. So one half double crochet and two half double crochet, and there we go. We're going to keep adding two half double crochets in each eye all the way across, and we'll meet back up here to finish off row number four. Okay, I'm down to the last eye of the last star from the row before, and I'm placing one half double crochet and two half double crochets. And now to end this row, we're going to work a slip stitch under both loops in the top of the star at the end of the, the row. Pull that through and that completes row number four. I'll flip that over here and you can see we now have two complete two row repeats of our star stitch pattern. And you can see that because we worked in the back loops, we have a nice defined break between the two row repeats. So keep working until we have eight inches, and then we'll get back together and I'll show you how to assemble uh, and stuff our pumpkin. Here we are after we've completed eight Row repeats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a total of 16 rows, if you count the right side rows and the wrong side rows. No matter what size you're working, you're always going to want to finish on a wrong side row so that you get full two row repeats when you're making your pumpkin. So my pumpkin measures about eight inches long and about six inches across and that's the size we need to make our mini pumpkin. At this point we're going to fold this in half with the pretty side in so looking or the right side rows facing each other and then we need to seam up the ends of our rectangle. To seam these up we're going to chain one To get started and then we're simply going to align the top two edges and we're going to work into the top of the stitches along the edge and this is not necessarily an exact science because we are going to be covering this up when we assemble the, 
the pumpkin. So we're just going to align them as best we can and work through two sets of stitches front and back all the way across the row in slip stitches. So to do that, we're just going to insert on this side, find the corresponding stitch on the other side, insert there, yarn over, and pull through the loop on our hook to create a slip stitch. And we're just going to keep doing that, making sure we catch each stitch along the edge. And we'll do that all the way across and I'll meet you back here at the end. Okay, I'm back here at the end, finishing up my last couple slip stitches to seam up the end. That's it. At that point, we just chain one and we pull up a nice long loop so that we can use that to cinch close the bottom of our pumpkin. And and find the end of this loop. My yarn's all twisted. Cut that. Cinch that up a little bit. And now you can see we have our wrong side facing. We've got our nice seam here. And we've got this long tail that we're going to thread onto a yarn needle. And now I'm going to simply weave back and forth through the ends of the rows all the way around our pumpkin perimeter here. This is not an exact science. You can be kind of rough with this as long as you get a pretty good weave through there. You don't want any big holes in the bottom of your pumpkin. I'm almost back to the beginning here, and now I am back to the beginning. There's my tail. And all I'm going to do at this point is simply pull that nice and tight to close, cinch off, and close the bottom of my pumpkin. I'm going to create a little sewing knot here. I don't even know what this is called. I just go under a couple loops, pull through, and then stick my your needle back through the loop, pull that tight. I guess it's like a chain stitch, really. All right, so I've tied a knot, so my pumpkin's nice and closed on the bottom. And at this point, I can just tie a couple knots here with the tail that's available. This is all gonna be on the inside of the pumpkin, so looks don't matter. You can weave these in if you'd like, or you can simply snip them off. Leave them inside the pumpkin. If you're worried about them poking out, you can also weave them in if you want to. I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now we're gonna flip our pumpkin right side out. I have some polyfill here, and I'm going to use that to open up this end after I've turned it right side out. And we're going to stuff our mini pumpkin with the polyfill. And you can stuff it to any density that you want. If you want a nice firm pumpkin, you can put more polyfill in. If you want a softer, squishier pumpkin, you just use less. How much polyfill you use will somewhat determine how wide and how tall your pumpkin is. So I think I'm going to put a little bit more polyfill in mine. Before I do that, I did want to tell you that if you wanted to weight this down, you basically just make a little hole in the center of your polyfill like this. And now's the time to use a handful of rocks, putting those right down in the center of your pumpkin. And that helps it stand up if it's a little bit taller. And it also helps it um, serve as a doorstop or a paperweight or something like that too. Okay, I've grabbed a little extra polyfill here. And I wanted to mention that polyfill can be very expensive at the craft store. One cheap way around that oftentimes is to buy a, a pillow from 
Walmart or a Dollar's Tree or something, or if you have an old stuffed animal that you no longer want or need, you can pull the stuffing out of either those pillows or one of your old stuffed animals, and um, and then you can use that instead, and sometimes you can get that for free. So I'm going for about a four inch pumpkin, putting that on my, my uh, measuring tape here. It looks like I'm just under that, and by the time I squash it down, it'll push out to, to about four inches. So you can do that to determine, uh, if you're looking for a specific size, to determine how much polyfill you need to add to your pumpkin. At this point, take another length of yarn on my yarn needle and do the same as I did on the other side, weaving in and out of my stitches making sure I go all the way around. And ending up back at the beginning, cinching that closed. So once it's good and cinched off, you can wrap this I do it a couple times because then it doesn't loosen up and I don't need somebody's finger to hold it for me. Pulling that tight, knotting that off again. Pulling that tight one more time. And there we go. We've got our pumpkin cinched off top and bottom. Now we're going to begin forming the lobes of our pumpkin. You can see here what I mean by the lobes, that's these this vertical shaping that we do. I usually use six lobes on my larger pumpkins, but with this little mini pumpkin, I think I'm gonna do four, okay? So to do that, I'm going to start with this long um, tail that I have left over, and I'm going to run it down this spot here. You can see that this looks a little bit odd. This is that seam, that slip stitch seam that we made. I want to cover that up. So to do that, I'm going to pull it in using um, this method of creating the, the vertical lobes of the pumpkin. To do this, I'm going to thread my yarn needle. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom of the pumpkin and Stab my needle in here and go under a couple loops to anchor it there. And then I'm going to give it a pull to create that first lobe. And then while I hold it down here, I'm going to go under a couple more loops and create a little sewing knot here by going back through the loop I just made. So I'll tighten it up. Now it'll be held there well enough for me to do that one more time and secure it again. Okay, and now I'm just going to go directly across from this lobe and I'm going to run this up along this vertical line here just to kind of hide where I put this strip of yarn. And if you're running low on yarn, you don't have to use the same yarn in the same color if you don't want to. You could use twine. I've done that on a couple pumpkins. Okay, so now I'm anchored. I've anchored back at the top again, and I'm gonna pull that tight, squish that down, hold it there, go through a couple loops, go through that Go through that loop and create a sewing knot, making sure it's nice and tight. I'm going to do that again one more time, finding a place to put my needle, pulling that up through there and tightening that down. And I've got this old tail here, so just to make it extra secure, I'm going to tie that knot. 
Now in this case, I've closed both the top and the bottom. When I was closing the top for this pumpkin, I actually closed the top around my stem material because my stem was a little bit wider and I wanted it to be down in the pumpkin a little bit. You can glue it in there to hold it in place. You don't have to, but that's one option. When you are cinching, you can cinch around that stem material. In this case, I'm just going to glue the top of my pumpkin um, to the stem with some hot glue. So now we're gonna repeat the process, making two more lobes, just the way we did before. And then I will meet you back here to show you how I finish off and embellish this pumpkin. All right, I've finished making the lobes of my pumpkin. And now I'm going to use a little hot glue. I've trimmed down one of these stems to make it a bit shorter. I'm gonna put some hot glue right on the end of a stem. And then I'm gonna stick it right here on the top of my pumpkin and I'm just gonna hold it there for a minute or so while it dries, but you can see how it's turning out. It's so cute. Okay, there it is with the stem glued on. And now just to embellish it a little further, I'm gonna use a piece of twine doubled up and I'm going to tie a little bow at the base of the stem. And you could glue this on there if you're concerned about it coming off. You can put a little hot glue on there just to anchor it down. But once you have your little bow, you can trim the ends to wherever you want them. And then you've got yourself, and there you go, there's your little mini pumpkin. So cute, here's its big brother. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now for the outtake, you can see how I style these. Thanks.